So, ladies and gentlemen, we have done an experiment. We have a group of athletes that we haven't given any performance hands in drags whatsoever, and we have them running the hundred meter. Then we have another group of athletes where we have given them performance enhancing drugs and also we have them running and we want to see if they will run faster due to the drugs or not. Now what standard error does for us is it helps us understand if this little sample that we have of, of experiments, if we can extrapolate it to the bigger population, to the entire population of athletes in the world. So can the results we find in our little experiment be also applied to the entire population, yes or no? So that is what standard error does for us. So let's work out the example and see if in our little experiment we can detect that or not. Let's get started. Okay, so this is how our experiment looks like. We have a group of six and six athletes, one that got the drugs, one that didn't get the drugs, and this is their running times for the 100 meters, okay? So we're going to load them into Power BI, and in order to work out the standard error, you need to have the mean, the standard deviation, and the um, sample size, okay? So I've talked about standard deviation, and I've talked about the mean before, Okay, so go and check those videos if you don't know exactly what it is, how to calculate, and come back here. Okay, so we're, we're going to do a new measure. We're going to, uh, this is going to be the mean, which in this case is the median. If you want to understand the median, the difference between median and average, check the video out. And we're going to calculate the median of both groups. So I'm going to actually create a new table that will have both groups in it. And this is the median. So we have, you can actually by eyeballing the data because it's so small, you can see that there is a higher variation in the numbers here. The lowest run, it was eight and the higher it was 10. Well here, all of the runs were eight. So the mean obviously is going to be higher for the ones with the drugs. The next one that we're going to calculate is the standard deviation. So the standard deviation will be the standard deviation of the sample. Again, check the video out if you don't know exactly what I'm doing. Put it in there. And obviously the standard deviation of our group with drugs is going to be higher. Standard deviation is a measure of variation again. Go check the video. And you can see the variation here is higher than the one here. So this makes total sense that it will be like that. The next thing that you want to calculate is actually the sample size. So sample size, sample size. It is just going to be, I'm going to just count rows. Count, count rows of the PDs. Let me move this a little bit below. And here we have six athletes on the control group and hit six um, athletes on our experiment group. So to calculate the standard error, what we do is we divide the standard deviation by the square root of the sample size and we multiply it by two to be 95% confident. Okay. So put it there, put our standard error within here. And now we are going to calculate the upper and lower limit. Let me show you. So the upper limit, we'll talk about what that does in just a second. First calculate it. So the upper limit will be the mean plus the standard error. standard error and the lower limit let's put it in there would be the mean minus the standard error put the lower limit there and and what does this really mean? We should actually plot it first. So what we're going to plot, actually you would plot this in a bar chart, but bar charts do not have error bars yet. So line chart, <laughs> shouldn't do it in a line chart, but <laughs> bear with me. So 
They're going to put the type, I'm going to put the mean, you see it there, and then I'm going to put, you go here to the analysis, uh, or analytics, and then error bars, we only have one, the mean, so we're going to put the upper bound, upper limit, lower limit, in there, enable it, and there you go, okay, so what we are actually saying with these little bars is that we're 95% confident and the 95 is multiplied by 2, otherwise it will be 68.3% confident. But we are 95% confident that the true mean of the population, that means that the mean of all the athletes, when they are not given any performance enhancing drugs, will fall within, you will see here if you hover over, so 8.63 on the upper side and 8.27 on the lower side. So there will be, if you don't give um, performance enhancing drugs, it will fall, the mean, it will fall somewhere in between there. Um, for our uh, experimental group, it will be from 9.66 to 8.14. So that's basically what it's telling you. Now, do you remember where I said in the beginning that the standard error actually helps you understand if the mean that we're calculating, if it is representative in this sample, the mean that we're calculating in this sample, if it is representative of the entire population, in this case, all the athletes that run 100 meters in the world. Well, by looking at this, we can say that it is, we can, we cannot, with this sample, say that this is true, because these things overlap each other. And you might say, like, what, what does it matter? Let me show you. So this is the group that did not get any drugs. This is the group that got the performance enhancing drugs, right? And let's imagine that we draw a sample from here, and then we get somebody there that didn't get any performance enhancing drugs that run at 8.6, for example. Then one here, they got performance enhancing drugs and run at 8.3, for example. And then we get another example and we say, okay, this one got like 8.3, but this one got like 9.5. I mean, the, the data is all over the place. You cannot conclusively say that performance enhancing drugs will give you uh, faster runners, basically. So if the data would have been like this, you get a bar here and you get a bar here where they are not colluding with each other, you can confidently say that all the time Athletes that did not get performance enhancing drugs will do worse than athletes that got performance enhancing drugs. You can see that the sample mean does not ma does not cross each other. So all the time you're saying you are going to get better results all the time. So you can't be quite certain that that's the true. But when the error bars are overlapping, you just don't know. It doesn't mean that it does. It doesn't mean that it doesn't. It's just that you don't know. That sample is not good enough for you. Okay, so now if you want to know more about statistics, it's actually quite fun once you start to understand what it actually does. So you can learn more about in my statistics uh, playlist where I talk about median, uh, confidence intervals, I talk about standard deviation, I talk about all kinds of stuff. So go there, check it out, and I'll see you again on Thursday.